We used to have the Fuvel spec here, the two Marineland five gallon portrait tanks over here. It's the small details like this of just tucking away wires that I think make a build just that more chef kiss, if you know what I'm saying. Put this here to kind of just distract from the cable management. But yeah, I don't know about you guys, but there is something definitely fulfilling. Just keeping the room clean, having everything organized and situated. Aha, crazy what one night's rest can do to a cloudy tank. Look how clear it is. A lot of the dust literally has settled to the bottom. I'll suction that eventually. I already do have an anticipated plan for this tank. That'll be for a different video. But to give you guys a sneak peek, gonna be using this bad boy. Doing a quick review on it as well. I didn't get around to putting the light up there, so I'm gonna do that now and tackle this mess. And voila, this light and this light are both from Hager. They actually sent them out to me. I'm doing kind of a long-term review on them. They are not bad at all. There are different shades, but this one has a lot more customizability. Um, I'm gonna circle through the different ones to see if I can match this one. I really like this hue, even though this is essentially the only hue that it comes in. It's a lot more of a cleaner white. This one has hints of yellow in it. This light is pretty bare on and off. That's essentially what it is, but this one has a lot of customizability. If you go up here, you could cycle through the different colors. You could see it has various hues of white, different temperatures of white. It also has a built-in timer, which I haven't figured out yet, but more to come on that. And it also can go through the primary colors. Oh, more than the primary colors. So pretty sick if you want your Tanks to look all gamery and Twitch like for streams. This is your light for sure. Outside of that, a very bright light. Just as a comparison, this is the cheap Aqua Neat lights that I have that I've been putting on top of this tank, which honestly it's doing its job to an extent. You can see this one is not nearly as light as this one. This one also has full spectrum, whereas this one only has blues in it. I'll do a review comparing these two lights in a separate video. Just so you know, if you guys wanna take a look at them beforehand, I'll link them down in the description. You can see that we are definitely getting there. I move the marine line over here as well as the fluval spec. These are a bit in shambles. I'm gonna dedicate a separate video for each of these tanks on kind of just bringing them back up to par. This one really was neglected once the betas died. As you can see, the Anubius is barely hanging on to life. We will definitely fix that. I could easily just hide this from you guys, but I want to keep it real. For now, the priority really is just to uh, get this full rack situated. As you can see, I'm consolidating all of my tanks into this one section. One mistake that I did was I spread them throughout my room and it honestly just made it a pain to do water changes. Not only am I consolidating them all into one area for the ease of water changes, I'm also taking down a few tanks just so that it's a lot more manageable. Multiple tank syndrome is no joke. Just take it one tank at a time. So I'm probably gonna do one tank, two tank, three, four, and then five right under there. Probably leave this shelf right here for a quarantine tank. I'm wondering if I should move this offset to the side and then have space here, maybe put like a fake plant or maybe even a real plant. Let me know down below what you guys think. I only have these two bottom shelves to go and then the real fun part begins and that is cable management. So we just need to add our quarantine tank over there, which is this little guy. Does not have black backing, so I'm gonna add some. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how I put this onto here, so that you get pretty flawless black backing as shown there, then click the video right over here. Easy like Sunday morning. Boom. Now we finally have every single one of the tanks in place. Next step is to tackle this mess. It's the small details like this of just tucking away wires that I think make a build just that more chef kiss, if you know what I'm saying. Part of my gross now is all right, I'm a, I'm a handyman today. I did call for a little bit of backup to tackle some of this wiring and that is this thing. 
a super long extension that'll hopefully accommodate for all the plugs. If not, I will need to purchase another one. If you are looking to purchase the same thing, I'll link this down in the description. Got it off of Amazon, of course. Hopefully this will help out in organizing this mess. So it comes with some hardware, has some brackets. Since I'm gonna be attaching this directly to the wire, I won't be using the screws. But as you can see, the brackets go into here. And now you have two nice holes and I'm gonna be using the old trusty zip ties to attach this to the shelf. And of course, put this one on this side. All right, hooked it up to that bottom part of the shelf. Not too clean of a job, but it'll do, especially since this is on the bottom. No one will really ever see this unless you are sitting down here. Can almost guarantee this won't be enough plugs, but we shall see. Pretty much got all the wiring done. And we still have a few outlets left over, which is great. It means I don't have to buy a second one of these. I did keep all the plugs that lead to a light on this rack on this specific extension cord because this then leads to a Casa Smart Plug, which is connected to my Google Home. Hey, turn off lights. Hey, turn on fish rack. I'll link this down in the description. It is extremely helpful. It's Alexa and Google compatible. So if you wanna make your fish room a little bit more techy, this is a great option. So now that all the wires are connected, only thing left to do is routing. I'm actually gonna hide all of these straggling wires by tying them to the poles in the back over there. Yet again, I will be calling in for backup and my backup this time will be these guys. This essentially is, is a roll of Velcro ties could demonstrate for you guys very quickly pardon the mess but as you can see I like these a lot better than zip ties because zip ties are more of a permanent solution I do like the added flexibility that these give me and if you guys have ever purchased electronics or cables or wires you've probably seen one of these come in stock with say your charging cable I just buy them in bulk because I think they're extremely useful not just in aquariums but if you're just trying to tidy up your cable management cord wrap it around feed it through there now you have a non-permanent way of managing your cables. Again, I'll link this in the description. Before, after. Just so you guys could see what I actually mean by using these Velcro ties. So I'm gonna do this all along this pole with any wires. Finally finished the cable management in the back over there. Put this fake plan here to kind of distract, but I think I did an overall good job of cleaning it up. I ran it through the, those two back poles over there. A lot of them fed up into this, which looks really nice. Still gotta go ahead and tuck away that cable over there. And then with all good cable jobs, there is all of this. I still have to get to that to an extent. But as you can see, this is out of the way and not visible. I'll get to that later. Ultimate goal is to do away with this extension cord, put whatever plugs I need to, and feed them into that white one over there. Since I won't have any tanks on this side anymore, a lot of these cables I can finally take away. Next order of business is to take, unfortunately, this tank down. As you guys know, the betta fish that I had in here passed away. I let it kind of run its course. Before I check in with you guys, here is full update on how the rack is looking. It's honestly looking awesome. I can't wait to actually start working on the tanks instead of setting up the rack. But of course, we gotta do this before we can move forward with the little projects here and there. Almost done with taking this tank down. Have some of the components over here. And now we have a nice gap here. Wiring is a lot cleaner. And I essentially shoved everything into this bottom portion. I'll get to it eventually. It isn't as bad as it seems. Everything is kind of partitioned. Nothing is really tangled, even though it looks like it's tangled. But for now, no one's really gonna kneel down there and it looks clean. I do wanna finally add water back into these three tanks. As you may have guessed, I had to take away some of the water so that I could move these tanks. So not the Hulk over here, I wish. All the tanks are watered up. Got the sponge filtration going again for some of the tanks. I do have to add water into here as well, actually. This has essentially the pumps and the air lining. I do want to revamp this, my airline system 
So that is one of the things on my to-do list. Definitely not today, but one of my goals. We are pretty much there. Everything is running. All the filters are going. We moved this bad boy. By the way, don't mind how horrible it looks, but we moved this bad boy from over here. We took down the other Marineland portrait tank that was here. Maybe we'll bring that up one day in the future, but for now, that thing is out of commission. Also, shout out Bath & Body Works if you guys are team scented candle. We used to have the Fuvel spec here, the two Marineland five gallon portrait tanks over here, and I have since shifted them all, or two of them rather, onto this shelf. So now everything is nice and neatly in one place, which will make water changes a breeze. Put this here to kind of just distract from the cable management behind there. If I do say so myself, it is pretty clean. If there was one thing I would adjust, it'd be to have this cable kind of route along the edges. I'll leave it there for now. Save that for another time. I have my quarantine tank going with a sponge filter and I just put all the media that I'm currently not using in here as well. I don't know if it'll do much since there really isn't a bio load in this tank, but might as well keep it submerged in water to an extent. This tank really was meant to just hold all the plants that I have, but as you can see, I do not have a green thumb. My stem plants keep uprooting. It's only a matter of time before these melt probably, but we shall see. Keep the fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll survive. I have been collecting a few Anubias every time I passed Petco and PetSmarts. This is one of the OG Anubias. As you can see, it still has an allergy issue. Comment down below if you know a fish that can help alleviate this issue. But yeah, I don't know about you guys, but there is something definitely fulfilling. Just keeping the room clean, having everything organized and situated. So each of these tanks, of course, they look dilapidated to say the least, but they aren't really holding anything other than shrimp. I do have plans for each one of these tanks. One other thing, this has been my breeding project. If you guys remember the koi guppies, these have been a challenge to breed only because I've never seen any other breed of guppy that's more likely to eat their offspring than this specific guppy. I had to be a little bit strategic. So as you can see, we have a female guppy in there and this is just a breeder box to prevent the other fishies from nipping at them. Other than that, really just wanted to take you guys along the process of fixing up the shelf. I'm really glad I added these wooden panels. I think it just adds a nice pop of color to this corner of the room. Little tip for you guys, I got this tray from the dollar store actually, Dollar Tree. Right now I'm using it to hold all my tools, my aquascaping tools, nets, this, that, and the fourth. And even comes with a rubber liner. If you see that gray liner down there. So now everything is tucked away nice and neat. And yes, for those of you who are wondering, that indeed is a book. It's not a stylistic decision on my part. My room is on a slant, so yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys got any value from the video, learned something, or just overall enjoyed watching it, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on my socials, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Peace. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.